we will see Jesus. One day, we will see Jesus. He will walk with us and talk with us. Tell us everything. He'll tell us how much He loves us. He will be so excited. You say the Lord excited? Oh yeah. You ain't seen excitement until you see Jesus. He is going to be so thrilled to have us there with Him. Finally. He might say something like, I've waited for so long. And now, I have you. And nothing, I promise you, nothing shall ever separate us again. You will be with Him forever. And he will say maybe, come and I will show you things that you've never even dreamed of. I will show you impossible things. I will show you what my Father has created and prepared for you. And we will walk up on streets made of pure gold. So pure that it's clear like crystal. You know that's where gold is? When gold is absolutely 100% purified, it's clear. Do you know that? And we're going to walk up before the throne of the Father. I believe that's probably the first thing he's going to do. Come with me to the Father. Millions upon millions, and millions of millions will follow Christ. He'll be at the front leading us to the Father to the throne of Almighty God. And there we will praise Him and rejoice before our God. And it may last a thousand years. But time will be no more. We will have lost, lost all <laughs> sense of time. There will be no watches to look at, no clocks to look at. You have to worry about lunchtime. <clears throat> I better hurry up and get home. My wife's waiting on me or my husband's waiting on me or my children need me. That'll all be over. We will have entered into eternity. And time will be no more. Is it worth it? Is it worth the heartache and the pain and the trouble? <laughs> Is it worth living in this old rotten body? Is it worth it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it worth suffering for, dying for, living for? Is God worth it? Hallelujah. I've told the Lord so many times that, Lord, I really am not so concerned about things. And you know my heart. We can tell the Lord. You know what? We can talk to, talk to the Lord. I've prayed so many times the Lord speaks to me in my heart. You know? 
And I tell him things, and, and, and as I'm telling him, I hear him say, I know what you're really thinking. I know what you really want. I hear your words, but I hear your heart. I hear what you're saying, but I hear your heart. I said, Lord, I really don't want these things. I want you. But the Lord always comes back and says, if you really want me, then I want you to want what I want you to want. I want you to want what I have for you. Because it delights me, delights Him, for me to enjoy what He has for me. When you love somebody, what do you do? You give them things, you do things for them, you prepare things, you, you plan things. Why? Because you want to make them happy. And you know the things they like and the things they really really do the love and, 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 it, and do the best you can to, to, to see that they get it. And, and so with joy, you stand back and you watch them receive. And the Bible says that we are to enjoy the things that God has given to us. Richly to enjoy. And I said, Lord, you're right. That would be wonderful. But you, Lord, are truly what I'm looking for. If you want to give me this or give me that, that's wonderful. I appreciate it. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll fall down on my feet and worship Him for all that He does. But most of all, I want to just love Him for who He is. And like the song says, I won't be satisfied until I see His male scarred hand and reach out and hold His hand or maybe give a hug. Or just stand, I'm not worthy of Him. But just to be in His presence. Just to be in His presence. See, He promised to be with us right now. He promised to be with us right now. His presence is with us right now. Jesus said, Blessed are they that have not seen Me and yet believe. Hallelujah. And we got a lot, we got a lot coming. We got a lot to look, to look forward to. Now I have his presence, then I'm going to see him bodily, physically, literally, tangibly. We're going to touch him and see him. Just like we see one another. But by faith, by faith we walk, by faith we live, by faith. We carry on by faith. We rejoice in Him. And He gives us a little nudge, a little touch, a little feeling, a little joy. He gives us, he gives us, he gives us what is of Himself to us now. Hallelujah. And He says, walk by faith. Walk in this world by faith. Believe what I say. One day you'll be rewarded. How am I going to be rewarded when I see Him? Hallelujah! He is my reward! And whatever He brings with Him is all right. Lord, whatever you have, it's okay. But you are my reward. How great is our God! How glorious is our God! That He Himself is our great reward! Nothing in this world, nothing in heaven or earth is greater than He is! Everything outside of him is created. But he himself is eternal. Therefore, he is the greatest treasure. Everything else is created. But he is the creator. He, therefore, is the greatest treasure. Oh, God, if people could only understand that. It's not 
things that you lack or need or want in this world. It's him himself that you need. And when you have him, then you have everything you need. Then you don't worry about your problems and your troubles and your woes because you have God in your life. You want to walk with your money or God? You want to walk with the Rockefellers or walk, or walk with the Rock of Ages? Hallelujah. You want to walk with kings or the King of Kings? With lords or the Lord of Lords? With man or with the Son of Man? With the world or with Jesus? Do we find satisfaction in just things or Him? Are we fulfilled by the things we have in this earth or the things we have from heaven? That's the richness of life. Everything else is just benefits. Benefits. Little side benefits. They said, oh, Lord, oh, here's a little benefit. The Lord says, here. Uh-oh, it's empty. Well, I'm not the Lord. <laughs> Lord said, here. Have a little benefit. Lord, you forgot mine today. Where is it? <laughs> no. It's a little benefit. It's a little something to get you by. I know you're going to need this as you follow me, as you listen to me, as you serve me, as you obey me. As you go on in life with me, I know you're going to need these things to supplant your physical, earthly life. But don't worry. i got plenty. What's gold or silver to the Lord? What's money? Paper. Just a tool. Just a tool. I'll give you all the tools you need to work with. It's like working on this building. We had all the tools we needed, didn't we, Ed? Thank God for Ed and his tractor. Boy, you should have seen us put this beam up right here. That was a sight to behold. The things wore, what, they weighed four or five hundred pounds a piece to put it up there with that tractor. But God gave us that tractor, didn't he? He put that tractor in your life so he used it to help us out in this church. And all the men who came here and worked and used their talents and their skills and their strength and their time, God gave to them benefits. You know, sometimes we say, Lord, I'm getting tired. But the Lord said, this is your benefit. <laughs> it's better to work and get tired than not be able to work at all. I'd rather be able to work and get tired and be a person that can't work. So be thankful for getting tired. Amen. That's all right, Lord. I'm tired. But I thank you, Lord. That work was good for me. It was good to sweat and toil. The Lord says, you're going to work all your life for me and work and sweat and toil in this life. But I'm going to give you the strength. I'm going to give you the tools. I'm going to give you all the help you need to do the job. When the job is done, look at the reward. It's always good to get the job done and then see the reward. See the benefits. But the real benefit is to be able to do it. Supposing I was sick and laid up, bed fast, crippled or anything. Those that are crippled and can't do anything are grateful for the things they do have. 
Brother Robin back there in, his, in the wheelchair in, in GW that when he went through that stroke. They're grateful right now for God bringing them through and what they have now. They're not giving up on God. It might have hit them hard and knocked them plumb down to the ground, but they still got their trust in the Lord. Their trust is still in the one who gives them what they really need in their heart and soul. That's what keeps them going. Hallelujah. That's what keeps you going. Well, if I just only feeling better, if you was feeling better, you'd forget about the Lord. If you had a million dollars in the bank, you'd probably forget about the Lord. Most people would. Some don't. Most people would. Your benefit is everything He is to you and all that He gives to you. All that you need. God never pr promised you a bed of roses. Never promised you a million dollars. He promised to never leave you or forsake you. And if you have the Lord, you have all you need. Hallelujah. If you have Him, He will supply your every need. I don't know how I'm going to make it. How many times have we heard that throughout our life? Well, you, 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 you're here today. Hallelujah. You made it here today. And by the grace of God, you'll make it tomorrow. Where have you come from this morning? Utah, Chicago? Any place you come from? By the grace of God, you'll return home. The benefits of God are unending. Hallelujah. And God knows everything that you need in your life. God brings you where He wants you to go because you need that. You need to be there. I don't know why, but He knows. I don't know all the about anybody, but God knows. Amen. God knows what you need to hear, what you need to see, what you need to understand. And those are the important things in life. The important things in life is knowledge and understanding and wisdom. The tools that God gives to us. The benefits of His goodness to us. And health and strength to carry on. Hallelujah. Didn't Jesus say, and Paul told us the same thing, having a roof over your head, clothes on your back, and food in your stomach, be content. It's our own worldly, carnal thinking that says, if only, if only I. And God says, turn away from yourself and look to me and be thankful for what I've given you now. Be thankful for what you have. Be faithful in what you do now. Just do all that I told you to do and be faithful to do it. And God says, I will make you, if you're faithful in the least. Boy, we've been faithful in the least. This little church has been faithful in the least. God says, you be faithful in the least, I'll make you real over much. So as we continue to go on, God begins to increase everything in your life. Amen? For His glory. So the benefit is Him. The benefit is just serving Him, loving Him, obeying Him, knowing Him, trusting Him, and just, just leaning on Him. That's, that's the benefits. It's a privilege. I had a dream one time the Lord come by. I've told you this dream before, but I'll tell you again. Some of you ain't heard it. I was, he was just walking along. I was, I was standing there and the Lord walking by with a group of people. He was out front. They were following Him. There were just four, five, six people. They were ordinary looking people like anybody. And he walked in front of me. And as he passed by, I, I got on my knees before him. And I said, Lord, I want the honor of serving you. Give me the honor to serve you. He just kind of looked at me and said, then 
get behind and follow me. Boy, I was rejoicing. I got in with that other group of people there, and boy, I was just, <laughs> here I am, I'm, I'm going to follow Jesus. It's a privilege. So, Lord, thank you for the honor and privilege of following you, of serving you. Is the Lord concerned about you? Yes, he is. But what he's mostly concerned is, where is your heart? He wants your heart set upon Him. He wants your mind set upon Him. He wants you to, to, to put aside all your fleshly desires and hopes and dreams and look to Him. And let Him fulfill your life. Let Him take you where He wants you to go in life. And be content in Him. And whatever it is you do in life, it won't matter what you do. He did, did. He's not telling you to stop doing what everything you're doing right now. Just stop doing it. Stop your job. Don't go to work no more. Just sit around the house and stare at the wall. He's saying when you look to me, no matter what position you are right now in life, I will enrich your life. Quit looking at trying to make more money and try to get more of me, Jesus is saying about himself. Look in more of him. And as you are filled more with him in your thoughts and heart, then he will fill your pocketbook with more money. If you need it, he'll put it there. Hello. Hallelujah. Now. Now for the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 5 I'm going to read you scripture chapter 5 verse 5 and hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Christ is saying the hope that he gives the hope for what? Hope for everything. I never give up. Never ever. He makes it so rich to us that we would we are filled with that spirit that says will never ever give up. If they throw me in the lion's den, I ain't giving up. If they throw me in the fire, the furnace, I ain't giving up. I ain't going to give up. See, hope makes not a shame. I'm not going to be confused. Or confounded. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get to the point of just giving up on everything. Yeah, you know, it's a terrible thing to be that kind of that, that, that be that way. Because people give up on life. They give up on everything in life. They just they just quit. They just they just throw up their hands and just I just give up. When they don't understand and when things is going wrong, nothing's going right for them, and they can't make ends meet or they can't, uh, they can't figure something out in life. They just, they, 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 nothing's working right for them and they just, you know, they've tried so hard and they just get to the point where they say, I'm just, just give up. 
I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't understand. But the hope that Jesus gives maketh not ashamed. So there may be a lot of things I don't understand. But I ain't giving up. There may be some things going on in my life that confuses me somewhat to the point where I don't understand. That's all right. I'm not going to be confounded about it. I'm not going to drive, let it drive me to the point of saying, I, I just don't know. I just quit. I just give up. I just, uh, I'm just tired of all that. I ain't never going to get to that point because Jesus gives me His spirit of hope. Hallelujah. And the spirit of Christ says, I shall be victorious. I am victorious. Yes. Death shall not hold me. The devil shall not defeat me. I am the King of kings and Lord of lords. And whatever the Father has sent me to do, I will do it. Whatever God has promised me, I will stand on His promise. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give up on life and give up because if I do, I'm giving up on Him. If I give up on the situation, I'm really not believing God. I'm giving up on God. But no matter what the situation is, Somebody said, well, if God was really concerned, how come my situation isn't any better? You want it to get worse? How about if you were dead? How about if you were in hell? How about if you had some kind of dreadful disease? How about if you were dying of cancer? How about if somebody come along and smack you in the face? Beat you up? How about if the police come throw you in jail? How about if you was in prison? How about if you were deaf, or blind, or crippled? How about if you had no feet or hands? Probably back here didn't have any feet. One time, fellas complained about his shoes. Well, I wish I had new shoes. Everybody get new shoes. Looked around, and saw a fellow didn't have any feet. You've heard you heard that said. As a rule, man's a fool. When it's hot, he wants it cool. When it's cool, he wants it hot. He always wants something he ain't got. <laughs> always wants something he hasn't got. The hope that Jesus gives us makes me content. I'm like everybody else. I get troubled and, and, and upset, and it's the small things that trouble me mostly. Little bitty things. They go wrong. Ready to throw the, you know, <laughs> throw something through the TV screen or something. But the, the truth is, just relax. Take a deep breath. The hope he gives maketh not ashamed. Because I'm not going to be confounded. I'm not going to be confused. I'm not going to get to the point of giving up. I'm not going to feel like I, I, I'm going to quit. I, I've gone too far. It's too much. I can't handle it. Amen. Because why? Because the love of God Hallelujah. holds me. Yeah. The love of God helps me to keep my sanity in this world. The Lord helps me to keep my sanity in an insane world. The world is being turned upside down today. It's going crazy. But thank God for the hope we have in Christ. 
It keeps us straight. It keeps us on the right track. It keeps us clear and straight and true and blue. And we don't have to give up and quit. We know where we're going. We know who we are. We know where we stand in the Lord. And we're not moved by the things we see or hear. We're not going to be like the rest of the world who doesn't know the Lord and give up. We're going to stand fast. We're going to stand fast in the faith of Christ. Stand fast in that hope. Shed abroad in our hearts the love of God. Shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that He's given to us. Hallelujah. Why does God shed abroad in our hearts? Why does He do that? He sheds it abroad. Did you, ever see a, did you ever see a farmer planting the seeds? I've seen them. On, uh, uh, my folks always, you know, took it one seed at a time, dropped it, made a little hole, put that down in the, in the row, make a row, and go along there and put your seeds in. I've also seen them where they have bags hanging over their over their shoulder and reach their hand and just throw it out like this. They grab the seed and just throw it. Well, they broadcast the seeds and it just spreads everywhere. Everything that's everything there uh, gets a seed. Every part, every inch of that ground, every square inch of that ground gets a seed thrown on it. God ain't missed you. He ain't overlooked you. Who do you think you are? Are you some kind of privileged character that God overlooks you? Sometimes we act like we want to make ourselves that person. Well, I'm the one that God overlooked. As if we're proud of it, you know. God's not overlooked you. You overlooked Him. When he broadcast his love. Hallelujah. Every square inch of you. Did you hear what I said? Every square inch <laughs> of you is covered with his love. To me, that says every part of me. That means my brain, my heart, my soul, my spirit, my body, my feet, my hands, my concerns, my makeup. Everything that concerns me in every part, nothing is left out. God's even concerned about the clothes on my back. When He shed His love on me, He shed, he shed clothes on me. <laughs> Hello! When He shed His love on me, He shed food on me. When He shed His love on me, He shed water. All I want to drink, He gave it to me. And every problem I encounter in life, He shed every answer to every problem. His love is shed abroad in our hearts. When God said He loved us, He meant, he meant every, everything about us. God loved my soul, but He don't care much about my body. God loved my, you know, He loves this about me, but He don't care much about that. That's a lie from the devil. He loves every part and parcel of your life. He's concerned with everything about you. That's what it means, the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died. For the ungodly. The 
God commends His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. How am I saved this morning? I want you to think about what I'm about to say. I'm saved because, well, I just feel like I'm saved. Well, that's a good feeling to have. But what do you, what do, you do when you, when you don't feel like you are? Are you not saved because you don't feel like you are? Do we go in and out of Him based upon how we feel? Well, I feel pretty good today. I feel like, you know, I feel like the Lord really been good to me today. Almost like, you're, like we're trying to say, well, He's been pretty good to me today, but I don't know about tomorrow. <laughs> How is it that we're saved? By what are we saved? By His life. It says the script I just read to you. By His life. Gosh, that, man, that speaks everything right there. What is that? What is He saying? What's the Apostle Paul telling us? If I'm saved by his life. And Jesus is alive forevermore. Did you catch it? Are we part of him or are we not part of him? Are we saved by him or we're not saved by him? We either have life because of him or we don't have any life. Well, I thought, I thought, I thought, well, you thought wrong. <laughs> Your life is because of his life. You are alive because he is alive. You're saved because he is risen from the dead. Well, I thought I was saved because how uh, hey, you believe. But what is it that you believe? Christ is risen from the dead. How do you know you're saved, brother? Because I know Jesus is alive. Amen. How do you know you're a child of God? How, how do you know you Because Jesus is alive. How do you know you're healed, brother? Because Jesus is alive and well. Hallelujah. How do you know you got the Spirit of God? Because Jesus is alive and well. Hallelujah. How do you know you're blessed of God? Because Jesus is alive and well. Hallelujah. That's why. Well, I thought I was blessed because I was because, because, because No, you're alive. Because Jesus is alive and well. Amen. Do you see it? Hallelujah. Boy, you're going to change your whole perspective on that. You thought it was some other reason. That's the reason. You come to church because Jesus is alive. Well, you serve God. And love Him. Because Jesus is alive. Believe in Him. Now I'm believing Him. He's alive. His life is your life. Whatever is His, listen, whatever is Christ's, whatever belongs to Him, Ain't that right, brother? Whatever belongs to Christ belongs to you. Now there, devil. See if you can take it away from Jesus, if you will. You can't take it away from Christ. And he says, what's his is mine. 
I'm saved by his life. Jesus lives for me. He's always been alive. But when he came as a man, he died. He died as a man. He died a man's death. He died a horrible death on the cross in my place. But when he rose again, he rose for me. He died for me and he rose for me. He died for me, but he lives for me. I'm not spit on you here, you better watch out. These front row seaters better watch out. I'm not spit on you, but that's all right. Praise God. It'll be anointed by the Holy Ghost if you get spit on. Hallelujah. Maybe God will heal you if you get some of that spit falling. I don't know. Oh, my God. I can just hear it now. People say, oh, that preacher's preaching my uh, anointed spit. I wonder what he's going to do next. <laughs> my God. If Jesus died for me, then he lives surely before God for me. Hallelujah. Why do you love God? I'm, I'm, let's, let's look at this in a different, from a different point of view. Why do we love God? Why do we love him? Now, now, wait a minute now. Hold on. I know what you're going to say. Why do I love God? I'm going to tell you why. I am so joined to Christ. I can tell you why I love God. Because Jesus loves God. Because Jesus loves the Father. He's going to hit you in a minute. We love him because he first loved us. Therefore, I love because he loves. If he hadn't loved the Father, he wouldn't have done what he did. But because he did what he did for me, then I can love him. Therefore, I love God because Jesus loved God. How is it possible for me to love God? Because Jesus loves God. Hallelujah! And His love will never fail. The love that Jesus has for the Father will never die. It will never die. I want some of that love. I want the love of Jesus. I want the love that He has for His Father in my heart. Hallelujah. Therefore, He is mine. Victory. He is my connection to the Father. He is my life. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branch. My life, therefore, he says, will flow in you. And all that I am will flow through you. My spirit, my love, my faith, my hope, my victory, everything that I am will flow in you. I, he said, therefore, will be in you. And my words will abide in you. That's why. Because, because the love of God Shed abroad, permeated, inundated, immersed, baptized. Years ago, many years ago, in the early part of the ninth, uh, ninth, uh, 20th century, when folks come to the altar and get saved, a preacher told me one time, you know, they used to say, I said, no. When they got saved, you know what they used to say? He said, they used to say, oh, they got baptized in His love. Well, they get gloriously say They come down the altar and, and fall at the altars and cry and pray and raise their hands. And work. Even the Baptists did that. <laughs> you Baptists didn't know that, did you? But you used to do that. You used to go down the altars and cry and weep before God. 
And you pity backslidden Pentecostals used to do it too. Right. They used to say, hey, yeah, baptized in his love. So what am I, Lord? All that I am, I am by the grace of God in Christ. In Christ. So that all that he is in me the love of God is shed abroad in my heart. Just like it was with Jesus. The love of God was just shed abroad in Him. Perfect. Perfectly. We're imperfect in our flesh. We all sin. He's the only one that never did sin. But the love that He had is the same perfect love given to us. The same perfect Spirit is given to us. The same perfect faith, the same perfect joy, the same perfect contentment, the same perfect peace is given to us. In spite, regardless of our sinful nature, Reckon yourself, therefore, dead unto sin and alive to God. How is that possible? Only in Christ. Then, therefore, I am not ashamed. I am not confounded. I am not bewildered. I am not in despair. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not stopping. I'm not going back. I'm going on. I'm going on with Jesus. I said, I'm going on with Jesus. Like Jesus said, Father, I'm going on with you. Whatever your will is, is what I'll do. So I'm going on with Him. And if I go on with Him, I'm not confused. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm, I know where I'm going. Praise God. I don't know everything. I don't know everywhere I'm going, but I know I'm going straight ahead. I'm going with Jesus. Praise God. And I'm not confounded. I'm not confused. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not stopping. I'm not going to let the devil get me in despair and discourage me and make calls and lie to me and get me down because I have the Spirit of Christ in my heart and the Spirit of the Lord said, Yours is the victory. Yours is the victory. Yours is the victory. Yours is the glory. Yours Yours is the honor. Yours is the power. Yours is my spirit. Yours is all that God has. Yours is heaven. Yours is all the angels have for God. Hallelujah. For you, amen. The angels of God has for you, amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Somebody talk about angels all the time. I don't care what they got. Whatever they got belongs to me. Hallelujah. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. They're there. The minister for you. All that God has is for your sake. Therefore, all things are yours. What Paul says, what he said, read it. Read it for yourself. Don't believe me, read it. All things are yours. Life. All things in Christ. Things in heaven. Things on earth. Everything. All things are yours. So I'm not confounded. Who are you? Who am I? I am a child. Of the king. I am a child of the living God. I am a child of the creator of all things. Hallelujah. And all things is our inheritance in Christ. The Father has given all things to the Son. He is heir of all things. Heir. What does that mean? He's heir of all things. Them glasses on your face belong to Jesus. (laughs) 
shoes on your feet. There he is. You're wearing his shoes. God, you don't understand what I'm saying, do you? I didn't have any well here's something. Hey, look at there. Hey, look at there. You know what? That's his. Can I borrow it? <laughs> Lord says, all that I have is yours. So therefore, I will glorify God in my body. I will glorify God in everything that I have. Because He is so gracefully and graciously given. All that I have is thine. And all that I am is thine. That clears my mind. That makes my mind clear, clean, and pure. Whole. He makes me whole by his goodness. I can walk, therefore, through life with my head held high. No matter what station in life I, I possess, or whoever I am, whatever I am, a whole lot of money or no money. Hallelujah. I am not confused. I am not confounded. I am not in despair. I'm not, in, I'm not discouraged. I'm not quitting. I'm going on. Because every day with Jesus, I've said it again before, I'll say it again. Every day with Jesus, is better than the day before. And the, and the more farther I go, the closer I get to being with Him. Amen. Stand with me, please. I mean, that sure is a long sermon. Well, this is a special day. <laughs> this is a very special day. You're in, a, you're in a special little building here. Yes, a special building. Hallelujah. You sat in that household of faith church. You're in a special place, praise God. God's favor is here. God's spirit is here. His anointing is here. I'll promise you it's here. Praise God. It's here. When you leave here, if you don't have it, you can take it with you. Yeah, bring it back. <laughs> bring it back and tell us what God's been doing in your life. I look for this fellow. What is your, what, your name is again? It's, huh? Your name Jack. again? Jack. Jack? Jack? Yes. Well, boy, that's a good name. I love Jack. <laughs> Jack. Jack, you want to come back, brother? And tell us what's going on in uh, shaky Las Vegas. <laughs> tell us what God's doing in your life. Hallelujah. I wish the Lord everyone could come back and has been here. Tell us what God is doing. Because I know God has intervened in lives. Hallelujah. Because it's, it's all a matter of getting to know Jesus. It's all a matter of Jesus in your life. It makes all the difference in the world. Hallelujah. This world will pass away. words never pass away. I'm hanging on to His Word. Trusting His Word. His Word is my lifeline, my life, my strength. Hallelujah. And He is the same as His Word. Whatever His Word says, He is. Father, thank You this morning for Your people. Like Paul in the book of Acts. I can preach to these people all day, all night. As long as you give me the strength, the words, the Lord, you will speak to their hearts. And every day of their life as they read your word, hear what you say. You will fill their lives. And you will give them the perfect 
the perfect hope. Perfect encouragement that they need. And the perfect reason to go on. Rebuke the devourer for their sake, Father. The enemy who comes in like a flood. You will raise up a standard against him. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your people. I ask your God to just bless them more and more. Wherever they go today, wherever they go throughout the week, wherever they go throughout their lives, be with them, Father. Everything they put their hand to do, let it prosper. And let them just get to know more and more. Let them get to know you more and more. In Jesus' name. That they not discouraged or faint-hearted, but seek you with all their hearts. Heart. Fill their lives to overflowing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you've done here and what you're going to do. We have great expectations. Lord, you will save the lost and build your church. In Jesus' name. Amen.